Now, I was in Norfolk last week and I couldn't resist popping in to one of my favourite churches, St Helen's Church in Ranworth on the Norfolk Broads. St Helen's Church is primarily known for its late medieval root screen, which is perhaps the finest and best preserved chancel screen in the whole of Norfolk, covered with wonderful images of the saints. Now, I was going to do you a video tour of this screen in one take, but St Helens is a really popular tourist destination. And every time I started, uh, I had to stop again as more visitors came in. I didn't want to interrupt uh, their enjoyment of the church. So I've done a video here. I'm a little bit more subdued than I normally am. And I've taken it in a number of takes. And it gives you an overview of the iconography on this extraordinary screen. Now we know that most chancel screens in Norfolk churches were painted through collaborative efforts with various parishioners and families paying for the painting of different parts of a chancel screen and that seems to have been the case in Ranworth. One of those parishioners in Ranworth is a man called Thomas Irring and when he made his will in 1479 he asks that all his worldly goods are sold to raise funds that will allow the south side of the screen above the lady altar to be painted. 550 years later, we can still enjoy his generosity. So on the north side of the screen, you've got four figures. On the far left, you've got St. Etheldreda, St. Audrey of Ely. Next to her is a very curious figure appears to be a figure of St John the Baptist in a camel hair coat but is perhaps St Agnes repainted and altered, very curious. And next to it is a shadowy figure of St John the Baptist where you just see all the underpainting not the overpainting and it seems that this panel was abandoned very shortly after the painters had completed it. Intention changes. And I think a three-dimensional panel was probably placed in front of this. Instead, you can see where, above where that panel would have been, they've painted in the red background still. And then next to that is a figure of St. Barbara, holding her tower and her martyr's palm. And above all four of these figures, well three of them at least, are lovely figures of angels, feathered angels, and they're holding up little canopies of honour, little cloths of estate rather, behind the figures of the saints. One of the great things about the Ramworth screen, you've got lots of extra side details that often don't survive in other screens. So here you've got this very narrow parklose with a pricket for a candle, so that's still surviving. And it's divided from the rest of the nave by this OG, sort of half OG detail with cusps and crockets of the length of it. Lots of extra decorative detail on this screen. And then this side parklose, this north parklose, has other figures. At the bottom, St George with his dragon. We've got St Stephen the First Martyr with his stones. And then above, a tall figure of a sainted bishop. It's not labelled, so we don't know precisely who he is. Could be St William of York, could be any number of Anglo-Saxon saints in his full Episcopal finery. And then we have the screen proper. On the screen proper, we have a whole series of figures of the 12 apostles.
let's just look at, in detail at these two panels here. You can see the exquisite decoration on them. So we have got some Andrew holding his saltire cross. And then next to him, we'll go from the feet upwards. This is St. Peter in the most exquisitely painted robe. Holding his keys. And one of the great wonders of Ranworth is you've got all these backgrounds, the usual red and green counter change, but with uh, stenciled flowers in gold. And the apostles continue with St. Paul, St. John the Evangelist, St. Paul with his sword. Thomas at the end there. And then we have another south park close to divide off the side altar. And we have St. Lawrence holding his gridiron. And then St. Michael. Defeating the devil. It's the, the beast of the apocalypse. There he is in feathered trousers, mantle wielding his sword against the devil. And then above them, it's a big tall figure of a sainted Archbishop, probably Thomas Beckett. And then if you look above that, and hopefully the camera will pick this up, you the most gorgeous decoration surviving. It really is a tour de force of late Gothic decoration. So we just go around the corner of this South Park Close now. And the second section, the south section of the screen, forms another altarpiece for an altar. And there are images of the Holy Kindred, Mary, the Mother of God, Our Lady in the center with the Christ Child. And on the left-hand side, we have St. Mary Salome, the wife of Zebedee, with her two sons, James and John. See them here. St. James is identified by holding a scallop shell, used by pilgrims to his shrine John plays with a little bird. And again, you've got these lovely angels above holding cloths of estate behind the figures. Right along. So we come down to the third panel of this Rividos. We have St. Mary Cleophas, St. Mary Clopas, as she was known to medieval people, with her four sons, so Simon, Joseph and James and Jude. Jude has a little boat. Joseph plays with a cup and ball. And so Simon plays with a tiny little windmill. Really beautiful and tender image. There was a real devotion in the 15th century to the Holy Kindred, the Holy Family, the wider family of Christ. And then the final image of the extreme south is of St. Margaret of Antioch. We 
with the dragon at her feet, which she's spearing with her cross spear. So yeah, so in this case at Ramworth, the screen is not only a screen for the chancel, for which you can see the elevation of the host going on at the high altar, but also forms a backdrop to the mass and to the elevation, providing two wonderful altar pieces for these side chapels to be placed against. Scanning all the way through, both north and south. What people don't often realize about medieval, late medieval English Catholicism is that the normative experience for the laity hearing mass was to hear mass at a side chapel in the nave within their space, up against the rude screen. Now the loft of course is gone, there's the rude stair on this side which takes you up to the top, but the loft is gone, of course the rude is gone and has not been replaced. But one of the furnishings from the loft still remains and that is this extraordinary 15th century lectern which you see in front of you now. This appears to be a gospel lectern. And on the front of it, you've got the eagle of St. John with the opening of his gospel in Principium Erat Verbum. In the beginning was the word. And then if we go around to the other side, They've painted on a little bit of plain song, Gloria Tibi Domini. How fantastic. So it's a double-sided lectern, this. So you can have books on both sides. And is believed to be from the rude loft. Let's go to the back of the church where there's something else that's really very extraordinary. And that is a medieval manuscript. So in this reinforced steel case at the back here, if I whip off the cloth, Simeon, would you just help me whip that cloth off? Cloth off even, cloth off. <laughs> Let's take that off. Let's turn the light on as well. Do you mind turning the light on? So in this case here is this, the Ranworth Antiphona. A manuscript that is known to have originally been in this church and was recovered again in the 20th century and brought back here. Lots of wonderful sermon, plain song all the way through for all the antiphons of the hours. It is an extraordinary survival. So two things of note here, both that manuscript and also this extraordinary rude screen ensemble. 